Galatians chapter 2. The Apostle Paul had to visit the area around Galatia and established several churches in the area. But after he left, there came some false teachers behind him and tried to convince the people that they had to go back under the law of Moses in order to be perfected in their Christian life. And uh, there were some who even taught you had to keep the law to be saved, where the Bible says Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. But then there were others who said, well, now you have to go back under observing the seventh day, Sabbath day, and all these different uh, rules and regulations in order to be perfected in your Christian life. And Paul wrote this book to straighten out that heresy. And uh, he said there's absolutely no relationship the Christian has to the law as far as our salvation, our justification in God's sight, and in walking with God and pleasing the Lord. It's not under the law, but under grace. And we're to walk in the Spirit, and those who are walking in the Spirit are not under the law, but under the leadership and the overseership of the Spirit of God who lives within us. And so he writes this letter, and uh, then he comes down to chapter 2 and verse 20, a very interesting verse. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. He should never have died if anybody could be saved any other way, keeping the law or anything else. But I want you to focus in your attention in this verse 22, verse 20 of chapter 2. He said, I am crucified with Christ. Now, obviously, he's speaking this of all Christians, and he is saying something very important. Now, he, we know that we are not physically crucified. We know that we're not on a cross. And so he's speaking to us in a spiritual sense, in our relationship with God, in our standing with the Lord. And he is saying something very important. Now, he taught us the same thing over in Romans. And he said uh, that the law was a ministry of condemnation. And he said, uh, we're all under the curse of the law because he said, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. And he said, if you're guilty of one point, you're guilty of all. And we're all sinners. And the law was our schoolmaster to bring us to faith in Christ. But after the faith has come, we're no longer under the schoolmaster. And he teaches us these basic truths. But then he says, the law, the reason we have no relationship with the law is because the sentence of the law was death. And every one of us were under that curse. And uh, the law demanded our death. And so, he said, in the reckoning of God, when Jesus died on that cross, we were crucified with him. We died, and the handwriting of ordinances that was against us was nailed to the cross, and he paid the full penalty of it. And so, as far as the law is concerned, we're dead. Now, there's a good thing in that, and we have our Jewish prudence from that, and that is this. You can't convict a dead man. That's right. You can't sentence a dead man. And so he said, the law which was against us, now that has been fulfilled in the reckoning of God because we died and that we died with Christ. We were crucified with him. Now we have no relationship to the law. The law has no more effect over us. He said, sin shall not have dominion over you because you're not under the law, but under grace. And grace teaches us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly and righteously and godly in this present world, looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself that he might redeem us from this present evil world and from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. Now watch this. In the reckoning of God, when you put your faith in Jesus Christ, he reckoned you as crucified with him. Your old sinful nature has been crucified with Christ. But we live by faith and not by sight. 
Does everyone understand that? Sure, sure you do. I mean, no one here has seen Jesus, and yet you put your faith in him. No one saw him on the cross, but you believe he died on the cross for your sins, according to the scriptures. No one has seen him after his resurrection, but you believe he was buried on the, after the third, uh, third day, came out of that grave alive evermore. Amen. Has the keys of death and hell. He is victorious over it all. You believe that. You haven't seen it. You live by faith and not by sight. Now, that's important because, you see, we have a standing with God in Christ but we have a state down here, and we have this physical body we're living in, and uh, the devil is constantly telling us that it's not true. The devil is a liar and the father of lies, and the devil will lie to you if you listen to him, and he'll, live, he'll lie to you. He'll give you doubts about the Bible. He'll give you doubts about your standing with God. He'll give you doubts about the presence of God with you. He'll give you doubts about the future. The devil's a liar and the father of it. But we believe the word of God because God's word is absolutely true, forever true. And forever, O oh Lord, thy word settled in heaven. And we believe the book, the word of God. Now watch this. I am crucified with Christ. Isn't that a marvelous thought? Now, I have had that old law that was against me, the handwriting of ordinances against me, nailed to the cross. I'm free from that. I'm, no, I'm not under any condemnation. Now, the Bible says, now, the person who is in Christ Jesus, there is now, therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the Spirit, but... Not after the flesh, but after the spirit. You see what he's saying? He's saying we have a standing with God that's absolutely right and perfect. But then he says something very important. He said, although I was crucified, and if you've been saved, you took your place on the cross. You believe he died, and he died for you, and you were in him when he died for you. But you know, then he says we were buried with Christ, and you know, he says we were raised in Christ did you know that God looks at you and he said you've been crucified you've been buried and you've been raised to walk in newness of life in Christ Jesus Isn't that a marvelous truth and he said if you then be risen with Christ seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God set your affection on things above not on things on the earth for you're dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. Now watch this blessed, wonderful truth. Get this. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Now, a crucified person doesn't live, right? I mean, he's on the cross, he's nailed. But Jesus came down from that cross, and he's alive evermore. And we've been raised with Christ from that old death. And now we have him living within us. Now the Bible says that the Holy Spirit came and brought us the life of Christ when we received Christ as our Savior. Our faith was not in church or in baptism or in any good works. Our faith is in Jesus Christ and Him alone. We're saved by grace alone, through faith alone, by God's power alone, for God's glory alone. It's all about Him. But we also understand that though we're crucified, we have his life within us, and we're to live that life for his glory. Now watch this. When the Spirit of God brought us the life of Christ, we call that regeneration. You know what that word means? Re means renewed. Generation's birth. What is he talking about? He's talking about the new birth. And remember what Jesus said to Nicodemus? He said, Nicodemus, you must be born again. You remember him saying when Nicodemus said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say to thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus answered and said, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second time in his mother's womb and be born? Jesus said, no, you've already had that. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except you be born of water, first birth, and of the Spirit, you shall not enter the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. 
Yeah, you have to have a new birth. You have to receive Christ. And when you have him, he that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. And so that's in his Son. God has given us a record that we have life and that life is in his Son. Now the Holy Spirit comes and lives within us. And his position, his work to do is to bring Jesus real to us. Remember when Paul prayed, as recorded over in the book of Ephesians chapter 3, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. Now you get it? He said it's by faith. It's not by sight. You don't see the Holy Spirit. You don't see Jesus in you. But you accept it by faith, just like you accept his death on the cross by faith, his resurrection by faith, his ascension by faith, his intercession at the Father's right hand in our behalf, his advocacy of, our, of ourselves before the Father in heaven, the promise that he's coming again, I will come again and receive you unto myself, where I am there you may be also. We receive all of that by faith. That's it. And so we receive this by faith also. That the Spirit of God lives within us, and he brings to us the life of Jesus. Now watch 2.20 again. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I. Now there's the secret to it. I'm not depending on myself. I'm not depending on my own works, my own sincerity, or anything else about me. Nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Throughout the years, I've had people say to me, well, preacher, I'm afraid not to get saved. I don't want to get saved because I don't believe I could live it. I don't believe I could live it. And I always say, you know, congratulations. You have gotten a hold of a truth that a lot of people haven't got a hold of. There's no way you can live it because it's not yours to live. It's Christ liveth in me. Not I, but Christ. And you see what he's teaching us is that the Christian life is a life of faith, just like you receive Christ by faith for your salvation. You receive the life of Christ in you by faith, and it's from faith to faith. From faith in salvation to faith in the Christian walk day after day. Have faith in God. That's what Jesus said. Now, he said, it is no longer I, but Christ liveth in me. Oh, what an exchange that is. To exchange our weakness for his power. To, to our, exchange our ignorance for his wisdom and knowledge. To, to, uh, to exchange our fears and all of our doubts to his assurance. It's all about Jesus. Now, are you saved? Have you trusted Christ as your Savior? You received him by faith. You put your faith in Jesus and uh, you were born again. Now put your faith in Jesus to his life is in you and you're going to live a life of victory and power and a life of joy and a life of fruitfulness for the glory of God because Christ is in you of a truth. Christ dwelleth in you. Now, I would, if I were teaching a class, I would say this class, class, repeat after me. Christ dwelleth in me. Christ dwelleth in me. And I would say to this other class, say this, Christ dwelleth in me. Christ dwelleth in me. Well, do you know that's exactly true? That's what the Bible says. The Bible says Christ is in us of a truth. And so we just depend on the Word of God. We depend on what the Lord is doing in our lives. Now, if you're having defeat in your Christian life, it's because you're not trusting Jesus to give you that victory. You're trusting uh, something else, maybe your sincerity or your uh, hopefulness or your trying or your reading the Bible and praying and all those things you ought to do every day. But those things 
are not going to help you unless you're depending on the Holy Spirit who brings you the life of Christ into your very being. Watch what he said. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the body, in the flesh, the life that I'm now living in this old body, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved, who loved me and gave himself for me. Now, he, you know, he, the Bible speaks of the grace of God. What does that mean? The grace that God gives to us. It comes from him, right? The grace of God. We're talking about the love of God. That means the love that God gives to us, right? We're talking about the wisdom of God. That's the wisdom that God gives to us. And when we talk in this verse about the faith of God, it means the faith that God gives to us to rely on his son. Now, how do you get this faith? Well, I'm glad you asked me. The Bible says in Romans 10, 17, now faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Word of God. So you want more faith? Here's the answer right here. Get in this book. Read this book, study this book to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You want more faith? Get where the faith comes from. Faith comes from this book. And when you hear it, that's being in church, that engenders more faith in God. And when you read it and the Spirit of God speaks to you and you hear the word of God, it brings you faith and then you know you can depend on that Jesus who lives in you, the Spirit brought to you, the very life of Jesus. Now, the Bible is very clear in these matters, and yet it seems like you don't hear much preaching about it or much teaching about it because there is an element of mystery about it. I mean, it's a mysterious thing, is it not, to think that God, the Holy Spirit, lives in us and brings to us the life of Christ? I mean, there's an element there, and immediately when you open the scripture like this, the devil, and the devil goes to church every Sunday and Wednesday, and the devil is immediately there to whisper and say, oh, that's too deep for me. That's, that's deep doctrine, and that's mysterious stuff, and I'll never get that. Well, the devil's a liar. Remember what we said in the beginning? The devil is a liar. Now, you can understand this, and you can grasp this, and you can experience this. The Holy Spirit of God came to make Jesus real to you. Now, Jesus said, it is expedient for you. That is, it's the very best for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Holy Spirit will not come. But if I go away, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, the Spirit of truth has come, he will take all of the things that I've told you and bring to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. He shall teach you all things. He shall testify of me. He shall testify of me. And the Holy Spirit's job is to shine the focus and the spotlight on Jesus, and he does that in our lives. When you have a difficulty, the Spirit of God, if you allow him to do so, will shine the light on Jesus, and he'll see in Jesus Christ all the strength that you need, that you might be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man. That's where it comes from. And then we're walking in the Spirit instead of walking in the flesh. Now, you understand. Watch this from the book of Galatians, chapter 5. He tells us the Spirit Warreth against the flesh, and the flesh against the spirit, and these two are contrary one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you be led of the spirit, then there's victory, there's power, there's strength, there's overcoming power, because the Spirit of God gives you the victory of Jesus in your life. Amen. Now question, is it possible for Jesus to be defeated? I'm going to have to hire some more deacons. I can't even hear them. What? Is it possible that Jesus could be defeated? No. no. You can't defeat him. He's the victorious one. 
He came out of that grave victorious over sin, hell, death, and the grave. And he said, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. He said, I'm the one. I'm the supreme now. Take my word. He's the undefeated one. And so, if he is within you, when you have those temptations, when you have those difficulties, when you have those doubts, when you have those fears, who can give you victory? What's his name? His name is Jesus, who is alive evermore. Amen. And he's the one who gives victory to his people. And so he said, I'm crucified. I'm dead. What that means is I can't do anything for myself. You know, it's the same when you talk about salvation. You know, know, a a person crucified, he can't crucify himself. You know, if you tried to crucify yourself, you'd be in trouble. You might could get the nail in one hand, but where are you going to go from there? You can't crucify yourself. What do you do? By faith, you accept the fact that God reckoned you crucified with Jesus. You reckon that by the word of God, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Now, what does this world need? Does the world need you, or does the world need Jesus? Hmm? What do, what do your friends need? What do your unsaved friends need? Jesus. They need Jesus. What do we need as Christians? We need Jesus. And so we have a living Savior. My heart cried out, the psalmist said, for, the, for God, the living God. I want that God who's alive evermore. And I want him to have his way in me. Give me strength, Lord. Give me strength. Fell up in Kentucky. On his knees at the altar. And he's praying, oh God, take these burdens away from me. Dear Lord, take these burdens away from me. These burdens are too heavy for me. Take these burdens away. Take these burdens away. And the pastor heard just about all he could take of that. So he gets down from the pulpit and walks over to him. And he says, let's pray. And he said, now, dear Lord, forgive this man's ignorance. He said, Lord... Open his eyes and help him to pray, not that you'd take the burden away, but you'd give him strength to bear the burden. Because that's the way you work. God doesn't often take away the burden. He gives you more strength to bear the burden. And you learn to roll your burdens on him, for he careth for you. Now, when you get under those burdens, you say, oh, Lord, take this thing away. Take it away. No, 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 no. Pray, Lord, strengthen me with your strength. Give me that inner strength that you can give, that Jesus in me by the Spirit, who is the overcomer, who can overcome every bad habit, who can overcome every difficulty, all the doubts and fears and all the rest of it, Satan comes to throw at us because we take the shield of faith and quench the fiery darts of the wicked. And you know, those fiery darts are darts of doubt. That's why you have to have the shield of faith. You see that? And here comes the doubt. And here comes the doubt. I have faith in God. I have the Lord Jesus living in me. Jesus said, fellas, I've been with you now for three years, a little more. And, uh, you know, it's been very good. We've been together day and night. You've seen my miracles. You've heard my teaching. You've enjoyed the miracles and had a party and everything I'm doing. That's great. But I'm going away. And I'm going to give you something superior to that. And the disciples at that point must have gotten just as big and wide eyes as you could get. What could be better than walking on the shores of Galilee with Jesus. What could be better than to walk with him and hear him speak and and to see him work his miracles? 
Jesus said, I'm going to give you something better. I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit, and he is going to be not only with you like I've been with you, he's going to be in you. Oh, so much better. Now, he said, he's bringing Jesus in us. What a glory it is when we can walk with him and talk with him. And we know that he is within us. I hope this morning that you'll get this. I hope the Spirit of God will open your eyes to this truth that Jesus is in you by the Holy Spirit. He came to bear witness of Jesus. He came to testify of Jesus. He came to bring you remembrance what Jesus said. He came to bear witness with your spirit that you are a child of God. He came to open the Scriptures to you and to lead you in the way you ought to go. And he does it all in the name of Jesus. He came to represent Jesus. Do you have Jesus in you today? If you're saved, do you have Jesus in you? Is the Spirit of God living in you? Now watch this. He said, what? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you're not your own? Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. What he's saying is, if you don't have the Holy Spirit living in you, you're not saved. Hmm. Well, that's what he said. And, and he said that every child of God is indwelt by the Holy Spirit. And he said the Holy Spirit came to testify of Jesus. How many of you would say, honestly, Pastor I really would love to love Jesus more. I, I would just, I want to love my Savior more. Without showing your hands, would you just nod your head? Thank, thank you, I heard it. <laughs> would you say that it's a desire in your heart to love Jesus in a deeper way? to know him in a more personal way, that you may become intimately more acquainted with Jesus, that you may experience his presence and know that he's with you always, even to the end of the world. Well, here it is. Here it is. The Holy Spirit came to do just exactly that. That's what he came to do, to testify of Jesus. And so now you come and you pray the prayer that Paul prayed. He said that you may be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. The work of the Holy Spirit is to bring Jesus to you and he does it by faith. Have faith. God will keep his word. God will manifest himself to you. The spirit of God will bring Jesus and his life into your very being and you will walk with him and fellowship with him day after day. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for your precious word.